Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Ro and I'm a licensed esthetician in the state of California. In this, we're gonna go over a educational review for the black mask that everybody's raving about. Um, why should you trust my professional opinion? Well, um, I've been in the industry since 2004 and I've been licensed since 2008. I taught for six years and I was a leader in education by being in the top five percentile of the nation in terms of licensure and success rate. So um, in this black mask review that we're about to watch, um, we're gonna go over uh, different types of things like does it actually do what it says that it does and is it good for my skin? If you have any skincare questions or beauty questions, you can email me directly at glowbyrowadvice at gmail.com. Um, I'll be choosing different topics to go over and I'll be putting up different videos pertaining to those questions that you guys might have. So I hope you enjoy this next video about the Black Mask Review. And if you have any additional questions to this, feel free to email me about it. Have a great day. And let's change the way that you look at skincare. There's gonna be things that come and go. There's gonna be fads, there's gonna be things that just look like it's the best thing in the world and it's really not. Um, but social media and the media in general is, they have this grasp on us and they will basically tell you anything to sell you something. And, um, so I've been certified in a multitude of different topics and certifications. So uh, when I decided to talk about the black mask, I wanted you guys to realize that, you know, I'm not just firing back and saying, oh my gosh, that's so stupid, don't do it. Um, I want you guys to really understand what is happening to the skin when you're using stuff like this. So um, the black mask, what is it? Um, there's a few different things. I chose one of the black, black masks and I looked at the ingredients. Of course, not all of them are carbon copy exactly the same, but um, this one, of course, we see charcoal. Charcoal is the buzzword right now. A few years ago, I don't know if you guys remember, but everything had pomegranate in it. Pomegranate was antioxidants. Pomegranate this, pomegranate that. Everybody loved pomegranates. Um, and pomegranates are great, but different companies jump onto the bandwagon of this is the hot seller right now, this is what we're going to use, this is what we're going to keep in it. So we've got charcoal, and then the next ones are different types of alcohols, and then also witch hazel. Um, understanding that those things immediately zap the skin of all moisture completely. Um, because they'll immediately evaporate as soon as this mask comes out of the tube. Um, you'll see stuff like polysorbate, which is a surfactant, which surfactants are designed to actually hold the products together and bind it to whatever it's going to. Um, then we have uh, ascorbyl glucoside, which is in the vitamin C realm. It's an, it's an antioxidant. So of course they're gonna toss all of these other buzzwords like this is great, right? Then we're gonna get into um, what was towards the end of this list of ingredients and sodium hydroxide was on the list. And I don't know if you know what sodium hydroxide is, but on a pH scale from zero to 14, seven being neutral, that's where water is. Our skin is at a 4.5 to a 5.5. It's called the acid mantle for a reason because it's our first line of defense. Well, acid, alkaline. Alkaline is something that's going to soften the skin and allow things to actually absorb into the tissue. Well, it has the sodium hydroxide in it and that is going to soften the tissue and bring it to a pH that is not at a healthy place for it to stay after this is off. So we've basically broken down the top barrier layer of all of the tissues as soon as we put this mask on. Um, then we have something called xanthan gum and that is what is left to 
bind with this charcoal. And then of course we have um, Mount Marillonite, which is a type of a clay. Well, I don't know, have you guys worked out in the yard and you get your hands all muddy and then at the end of the day, it's dried and your hands are like so incredibly dry and they start to chap and they hurt. Well, this is gonna be the same effect with the mask, especially if you're leaving it on, along with something that is such an adhesive binder like xanthan gum. So, the clay, the charcoal, the xanthan gum, they're all gonna absorb your natural oils. Now we have evaporated everything along with those alcohols that have completely dried out our skin and all of these clays and everything have absorbed all of the oil, what's gonna happen? What's left is going to completely adhere to the surface of the skin. It is now like super glue. Also, it's binding to those hairs and you see when people are removing them, it's like they're in so much pain because it has 100% binded to the tissue. There's nothing that you can do at that point except rip it off. So what does this mean? Um, ingredients designed to absorb and change the pH of the skin are combined with ingredients designed to dry and evaporate. The skin is stripped of the protective barrier and what is left is um, damaging. It's adhered to the skin. Now what? The alcohol in the witch hazel have evaporated and then left the xanthan gum. You're essentially ripping off layers of skin. You are separating the top layer from the layers of healthy tissue underneath, which when you break those fibers, you're breaking collagen, you're breaking elastin. You are actually going to separate those tissues and cause pigmentation problems from pulling and separating it away from the body. Um, let's see what else. It's gonna rip open caverns in the tissue, which is also gonna let bacteria. And nothing have I seen where people are like, oh, well, I'm gonna really wash my skin really well with all of this cleanser and blah, blah, blah before I put this mask on. A lot of people are just slapping it on their face you have touched so many things throughout the day and come in contact with so many things. You've got so much bacteria. Now you're going to rip open. You're going to break down that barrier layer and you're going to rip open the tissue. And then all of this bacteria is going to get in. So um, at that point, we're looking into ripping out the vellus hair. That is that soft peach fuzz. Well, when you rip that out, that's also a direct pathway for um, bacteria to get down into the follicles, which are pores or follicles. They're the same thing. Um, now that all that bacteria is in there, you are going to end up with a world of hurt when it comes to all of your breakouts. Um, I've seen a multitude of clients that came in and they are chapped. They have almost like scabs around their cheeks, around the soft tissue, around their eyes. Um, they have major breakouts. I mean, just painful, painful, painful acne eruptions on their face and they don't usually have acne tendencies. Um, after that, you have to think collagen and elastin are produced by the fibroblast cells you're only producing a certain amount. Once those are damaged, those are really hard to replace. Um, so what are you getting out of this? Some of the reviews I read say, um, oh, well, it left my skin so soft. Well, ripping top layers of tissue off after you've softened it with lye, which is the farthest on the pH scale, um, I don't know if you guys know what lye has been used for in some of these instances, but concentration camps in Nazi Germany, um, they would have mass graves and they would actually dump raw lye onto these graves and it would disintegrate bodies. That's what they used lye for in the raw. Of course, when it's put in to a skincare preparation, you're, it's going to balance out to an extent, it's not gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're gonna fry your face off. But it's going to bring your skin from that 
4.5 to 5.5 all the way up to at least at 10 and your tissue is softened. So yeah, when you're ripping all of that off, you're ripping off layers of skin. So at that point, yeah, your skin's gonna feel soft, especially after you ripped out all of that hair. It was like you just got your face waxed on top of it. Um, if you're concerned about blackheads, you're concerned about the integrity of your skin, you're concerned enough to go out and buy a product on a whim because somebody from YouTube is trying to get famous and use a buzzword, you, need, you really need to start doing some more research. Um, I think that a really good place to start is looking into what is your skin type. We're all born with a skin type. I'm combination dry. I still have an oil production. By the end of the day, I have a little bit of a shine. But it's the end of the day. Of course, I'm going to have some shine. Everybody's going to have some shine. You're worried about these breakouts. You're worried about blackheads. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody has blackheads on their nose. You're, when you breathe in, you're breathing air and it's directing it to your nose. You're going to have debris that's being attracted to your nose. That's just what happens. So these Biore strips, this black mask, that's not going to pull all of these plugs out. What you're gonna see is sebaceous filaments. Sebaceous filaments are, are what's in the follicle that is actually designed to be there. Sebum is our natural oil. Um, that's what creates the happy, healthy balance on our skin. So many people are saying, oh, I hate how oily I am. That's like keeping your baseball glove oiled. It keeps it soft and supple and you can move. When you don't oil a baseball glove, it starts to crack, it weathers, it ages. You see the damage that starts to happen. Um, so embrace the oil, embrace what skin type you are. Now, making sure that you're cleansing properly. Don't go out and get an acne line if you've got one pimple. That's like going out and taking high blood pressure medication when you don't have high blood pressure because you don't want to get high blood pressure. Does that make sense to everybody? So um, there's a couple things that I brought home. Um, very, very, very simple products. Um, exfoliation is really necessary when it comes to keeping your skin soft, keeping it um, debris free, keeping it uh, more so on the glowing side, I guess you would say. So this is what I use at the salon. It's called a Luma um, from Image. And all it is is it's a powder and you activate it with water and you work it across your tissue and it's got different types of chemicals that are designed and balanced for your skin. So you've got different enzymes. We've got bromelain, which comes from pineapple. We've got papain, which comes from uh, papayas. Then there's a little bit of lactic acid, which is going to gently break up the intercellular cement that's holding together these dead cells. No, please don't go out and get St. Ives. Yeah, this might be 30 bucks, but guess what? This is going to last you at least six months. You're going to go out and get St. Ives and it's going to rip your tissues open because it's harsh. You've got broken shells that you're grinding into your skin. This stop or this will stop working after it starts to dissolve. You leave it on for three minutes, then it starts to neutralize. When you're grinding pumice into your tissue, it's going to stop working when you stop grinding. So this is one way to start. You have hyperpigmentation, you've got sun damage. There's something called kojic acid in this. There's bearberry extract. There's licorice root. These are all lighteners and brighteners that are going to eventually start to brighten and lighten all of that hyperpigmentation. Okay? Um, you really want a clay mask. You want something that's going to leave your skin soft and supple. You want to absorb some of those oils. This is very, very, very great. You can get this in a retail size. This is sensitive enzyme mask. Of course, you get that clay in this, but at the same time, it's designed to stay moist, especially like under steam and stuff like that, so that you keep that hydration. 
So let's say you come in to see me. You're gonna get a double cleanse. We're going to remove with hot towels. Your face is going to be steamed. It is going to start to soften. All of the blackheads, the debris, the congestion is going to start to soften. We're properly removing all of your makeup, your debris, your bacteria from the day, right? Then we're gonna go into exfoliation. This is going to start to lift up all those dead cells. It's gonna to start to break up that intercellular cement holding together all of those blackheads, okay? After that, I go in because I'm trained and I'm going to remove your blackheads with either finger cots or an extractor in the proper direction with the proper pressure instead of taking these things and jamming them into my face and rupturing the follicle which is forcing bacteria back into the bloodstream which is going to change one pimple into five. It's a chain reaction of events, okay? Um, after that, we go into a skin type mask for whatever your concerns are, for whatever your status is with your skin at that point in your life. Then from there, of course, you're gonna get a good scalp massage, you're gonna get your shoulders, everything massaged, hands and arms massaged, you're relaxing, which is also going to help the integrity of your skin because stress dramatically changes the appearance of your skin. You get fine lines, you get wrinkles, you get dull, you get listless skin when you are overly stressed. I know we all have been there in our life. So learn how to slow down, learn how to take care of yourself. From there, we'll go with your finishing treatment, which is going to be per your skin type, per your skin condition. There is no one stop fix, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing that's going to say, hey, you're gonna use this one product and that's all you're gonna to have to use. Um, bottom line, the black mask is bunk, in my opinion. You're just going to damage, damage, damage your tissue. You're literally, it's like putting super glue. Oh, and my favorite is I've seen these girls that are like, oh, I've got a DIY recipe for the black mask. Elmer's glue and activated charcoal. Mix it together and paint it on your face. And I'm just like, I can't watch. I can't watch. This is too much. So, um, I hope everybody kind of understood my rant um, when it comes down to it. If you are wanting to know what's best for your skin, even if you need to send me a message and say, hey, this is what I experienced, this is what I noticed, without having to stop what I'm doing and come in, is there something that you could recommend for me? I'll be happy to help you with that. I would really, really, really love to change the way you view skincare. Um, it, you only get one face. I would suggest making it a priority and investing in that skin because uh, you can change your hair color, it, cut it off and it grows back, you know, rapidly. Um, if you're um, not investing in your skin at an early time, then you're definitely going to see those results in the next few years popping up. So, um, I really think that staying away from fads and uh, not jumping around all these ipsy boxes and stuff. God, they're fun. They're so fun. But the problem is your skin is the largest organ of your body. It, that's like you're going to be taking a bunch of different medications because they're brand new and you want to see what they do to your body. Um, don't just blindly jump in and use whatever somebody's sending you. Just make sure that you're making a skin uh, investment. Invest in your tissue and invest in what people are seeing every single day. It's your money maker. Take care of it.